in part one, we talked about what our goals were for the video. In part two, we're going to actually talk about what our goals for the project are. Now, uh, if uh, you actually go to Google and uh, you just type in CNC, you're going to see that there's a lot of stuff out there. And that's what I'm going to do here is just going to hit uh, go to Google CNC and I'm going to click on, uh, nope, not videos, uh, images. And, uh, and man, there's just a lot of stuff out there. You know, you got these uh, big old uh, production machines here that are capable capable of uh, cutting all sorts of metals in a non-stop uh, production environment. And, uh, you know, uh, what is that? It says a 20-horse spindle. Man, you know, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice to have? And then right next to it, we have the little tiny home router. And they are, uh, looks like they're etching some uh, PC boards. And so, uh, you know, that's cool too. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else we got down here? Uh, looks like uh, right here we got, uh, oh, that's a shop bot. Okay, that's a kind of a uh, mid-grade, uh, you know, uh, kind of a mid to larger uh, home CNC. And uh, if you go down even further here, uh, you know, we got uh, yeah, some little MDF type thing here. And uh, if we go down even further, we got, uh, oh, okay, here's a... Uh, little uh, mini mill type thing that's been uh, uh, routerized or CNC'd. And so obviously there's a lot of cool stuff out there. And more importantly, uh, hopefully if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that uh, there are a lot of different uses for a CNC. So the first thing that you really have to do is define, okay, well, what are we going to use this for? What is our purpose behind this machine? And uh, your purposes might be very different. Uh, I'm going to tell you what the purposes are for the machine that I'm going to design today. What we are going to design is something that will A, cut wood, uh, B, uh, something that will be affordable, uh, C, uh, something uh, that hopefully will be very reliable and uh, very rigid for the money that we do. I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to design something that's uh, simple to build, simple to operate, uh, and uh, and uh, that uh, gives good results and minimal frustration for somebody who wants to get into CNC. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm actually going to Google something just for nostalgia's sake. Uh, and I don't know if I can even spell this right. So Silva, S-Y. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. My first machine, uh, I paid $35 for plans off the internet and I built one of these. This is Silva 25 by 25. Uh, in fact, actually, you know what, this right here is actually my image that was off of my build. Uh, that looks like later on when I was upgrading this to Silva, but I start with, I started with $35 plans, uh, for the Silva and ended up, uh, building, uh, one of these machines, uh, using, uh, tools that I had at home. And the neat thing about this machine is that, uh, you could build it. Uh, basically, all you need is a drill press and a, a chop saw, and you could build it. And uh, that was very attractive to me at the time. What we're going to try to do with our design now is we're going to try to build, uh, make it so that uh, we're going to add a community aspect to it. So that if you have basic tools and a buddy with a CNC, uh, that you could build it. And so, and what I mean by that is we're going to have uh, basically a, uh, a frame and then these end pieces that uh, will be easily milled by any of your buddies that have a CNC. And uh, if they mill these for you, then you uh, can basically assemble and be up and running in no time. In fact, I'm pretty sure you will uh, be able to build and uh, to assemble and build this in less time than I possibly did with the uh, Cecilva design. Now, I am absolutely not knocking the Cecilva. Uh, it was a great learning experience for me. I'm glad I did it. However, if I was starting again, I would not go down this road. Uh, the uh, Alex that is talking to you now is uh, a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and has a little bit more experience now. And uh, I am going to use what I have learned to try to avoid some of the pitfalls that I found with the Cecilva. Uh, I think we can do better. Again, I'm not knocking it. I am. Uh, I uh, have, there's a warm spot in my heart for them. However, I think that uh, for the same money and for the same amount of effort, you could actually do better. And so let's go ahead and try to do better.
And uh, and again, if you have a Silva, you're quite proud of it. That's great. You know, I I I think it it was a great product, but uh, I think that we could do a little bit. I think we could do better with it. As you can see, like right here, you know that uh, we're using cutting board material. Uh, we got uh, angle iron and roller skate bearings. Yeah, you know. And you know what? So many people told me that that thing will never work. It's you're just wasting your time. Why on earth would you do that? And I was bound to determine I did it anyways. And you know what? It was a good machine that served me well for uh, a little over a year. And I finally sold it and uh, built a bigger machine. And my uh, new machine is quite a bit different. But uh, don't let somebody tell you you can't do it. Because uh, if anything, I, just, I wanted to prove them wrong by this machine. I wanted to uh, show them that, you know what? Uh, you know what? You can uh, start from humble beginnings. And... Uh, and uh, you can actually make some really cool stuff. And actually, I built some really cool uh, guitars on my Cecilva, and I started my business with it. And so I wouldn't take it back. But knowing what I know now, I'm going to take a little bit more professional, a little bit more direct route. And, uh, and I think we'll be better off for it. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of fun looking at uh, looking at these old things. And uh, and like I said, some of these pictures are mine. Like In fact... Uh, yeah, that that's my machine right there. That was that's my workshop in there, and that's one that I built. And uh, I did a lot of modifications for it. Here's another one, you know. And see that uh, this part right here wasn't originally in the plan because as soon as I had this machine built, I immediately knew. There it is, cranes twenty five by twenty five. If you look it up, you can find it. And uh, but that guy right there, the guy that posting on that thread right there, doesn't know what I know, and that's why we're going to go with this route. All right. So enough about. Uh, what we're not building, let's talk a little bit about what we are building. And uh, I have made a lot of these decisions ahead in advance about uh, what we're going to do. We are not going to go with a steel frame. We're not going to go with a wood frame. We are going to go with, wait for it, an 8020 frame. So 8020 is an extrude. Nope, that uh, thinks I'm doing arithmetic. If I click on images here, <laughs> okay. 8020 extrusions. Let's try that. Extrusions. There we go. This stuff's amazing. This is basically, uh, was it uh, the director set for big kids and scientists and engineers? Oh, this stuff's amazing. It's uh, relatively cheap uh, for what it is. It's uh, and man, you can make all kinds of stuff with it, and it's structurally sound, and it's T-slotted, and it fits together like an erector set. Anyways, uh, it is little wonder. In fact, here we are. There's a CNC right there. Somebody has built out of 8020. And if we keep on looking, I'm sure that you can find mud many, many more. Uh, I am not the first person to do this, to build a CNC out of 8020 aluminum. Uh, however, uh, I think, uh, you know, I think the others that uh, have done it uh, have done it for very good reasons, and we're going to do that here. So, yeah, if I type in 8020 CNC, then we can see that there's been a lot of people that have built uh, CNCs out of 8020, and a lot of them are pretty good. Uh, ours is going to be a lot better than any of these. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll see. But, uh, uh, but anyways, structurally... And I think that we're going to be able to do it with either three or five pieces. So really, as far as cost-wise goes, I think we're going to be able to keep that cost-wise, that cost down. All right, next thing, uh, after talking about the frame, we have to talk about our linear motion. What kind of linear motion are we going to use? Uh, this is a very important part of CNC design, is how do we make something move in one direction, uh, or uh, i.e. one one. Uh, axes, uh, aka forward, backwards, left, right, or up and down, and not flex in all kinds of other directions. Um, that's a very important problem for CNC, and I am going to tell you what my plan is, and that would be the SBR20. Now, if you go on eBay and you type in SBR20, you'll notice that you're going to start getting a bunch of kits and stuff like this. Okay, okay, well, first let's talk about what the SBR20 rail is. Basically, uh, this is an SBR20 rail. It is basically a hardened rail with a linear bearing block 
on a uh, support, on an aluminum support. Uh, these things are pretty good for the price. Now, are they a THK or a high wind rail? No, they are not. Uh, can you get very good results using this? Absolutely. Is it better than using uh, uh, the uh, EMT conduit and roller skate bearings, as in the Sasilva design? <laughs> yes. So I firmly believe that this is a much, much better way to go uh, than, uh, than the roller skate bearing route. And uh, I think that you can actually get very good results from these. Now, as you see, all this stuff is from China. Now, uh, before you get uh, uh, too mad about that, uh, well, first off, uh, even the more expensive stuff's from China, but uh, what uh, you'll notice is that uh, you look that as a lot of these sellers uh, sell kits. Now, chances are we're not going to go look through here and click on one of these and have a kit that is going to perfectly suit our needs and our dimensions and all that other sort of stuff right there. But right here, Kuma Kuma 9, I don't think I've ever dealt with them before. Uh, you can contact them through eBay. And if you contact them and say, hey, I need this, this, and this, what I have noticed is that these sellers from China are absolutely willing to put you together a kit at a great price. And so uh, right here, uh, you know, uh, we'll figure out what, need, what lengths we need uh, later on. But uh, what I would say is uh, design your machine first. Find out what lengths you want, and then contact some of these uh, sellers on eBay and see what they could do for you. Now, I don't think I've dealt with uh, any of these before, but I remember back a while back when I was going through this for the first time, I emailed I emailed them, and they put they were sending me quotes just like that, and uh, the quotes were actually very uh, lucrative. Okay, so anyways, uh, so yes, my choice for this machine is to use an SBR twenty. Uh, round supported rail. Uh, step down from a like a THK SK at, or was it the SHS or the HSR or 20 or 25 millimeter, you know, the rectangular stuff. But uh, but uh, I've seen a lot of machines use this stuff with actually very good results. So I think in our quest for to make a good machine at a good price, I think this is a very reasonable compromise. In fact, I think that. Uh, I think that this is light years ahead of most home type solutions, meaning the, using the angle iron with the roller skate bearings and things like that. I think that this is a uh, much better solution. A, it's simpler. B, it's uh, got a much better structural rating and uh, it's going to uh, be smoother and it's going to be used in something, in an application that it was designed for. And so that's something that I think is very important. Uh, now, uh, so there's our uh, linear motion. Uh, now, to make that linear motion happen, we obviously need lead screws or ball screws. And uh, the ones that we are going to uh, look at are the RM uh, 16, nope, 1610s, I believe. Now, again, this is from China, and you can, as you can see in these images here, you can get somebody to set you up with uh, uh, with a kit with everything that you need, including your end blocks and all that. Uh, now, uh, you know, uh, and you can just buy it all together. Don't have to piece it together. Now, uh, these ball screws, I've seen them uh, firsthand. They are not, you know, they are not uh, the... Uh, like your uh, a lot of the high quality stuff that you're going to buy here in the U.S. Uh, and uh, so these are kind of the bottom of the barrel type ball screws. However, they work actually pretty good. They uh, for a home CNC for a hobby CNC type application, I think they are quite adequate. In fact, uh, uh, you know, if I was designing a piece of industrial CNC machinery and the boss was paying for everything, and all I had to do was uh, fill out a requisition form and uh, you know and uh, Sooner or later, these parts arrive at the doorstep, and uh, then I get to, you know, throw it all together. Then, yeah, you might not go with this solution. However, if uh, you're writing the checks and you want something that's, you know, that's going to work quite well, that'll serve you well, and you'll probably never even have any problems with, I would wholeheartedly recommend this. In fact, uh, uh, 
In fact, you know, I've, I've, I've seen these and uh, they work just fine. My first machine, the Sasilva, all right, you're, you're going to laugh at this. I didn't even use Acme Rod on that. I used All Thread that I bought at Home Depot. Yeah, it was a 3 8 All Thread, I think 12 turns per, or it was either 12 or 16 uh, turns per inch. And uh, I ran it for like that quite a while. I, my nuts kept wearing out and I had to replace the nuts all the time. So, and that machine ran pretty well. So if I can do it with all thread, you can do it with Chinese ball screws. I guarantee it. All right, I think we've cut, I think we've uh, I think we've covered that one. Let's see here. Uh, I think that's just about it. Later on, we're going to talk about electronics, but we're not going to worry about that quite yet. I think for now, uh, we we've, we've done the big things. Um, uh, just to recap, we're going to use eighty twenty as our frame. We're going to connect that eighty twenty together using uh, uh, parts that we are going to see and see out uh, using a friend or someone. And uh, we are going to make the linear motion with our SBR20 type rail. Uh, those were SBR16s. Uh, okay, well the SBR20 uh, that we saw, and uh, I don't care where you buy your SBR20, you can get it off of eBay. It's a very good place to get it. And then we're going to use cheap Chinese ball screws to make it go back and forth. If you want to use Acme and save uh, yourself a little bit of money, uh, you are free to do that as well. So anyways, uh, that concludes part two. Part three, we are going to actually start uh, uh, building stuff. And we're actually going to start, uh, uh, we're, well actually I guess not building, but designing. And we're going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, start a design process and... Uh, you'll start to kind of get an idea of what we're hoping to accomplish here. Anyways, uh, thank you, and I will see you 